grand, isn't it? Yeah. Tony Grant. We did say goodbye downstairs at the reception, Mr. Grant. Well, I hope you're not going to hold it against me. Look, Mr. Grant, I'm very tired and I was planning an early night. Sure, fine. Oh, yeah. Have you lost anything? I don't think so. Are you sure? Yes, I'm quite sure. Have a look in your handbag. Well, it's in the other room. Oh, wait. Oh, all right. You'd better come in. Oh, wait, here. You've lost my cigarette case, Mr. Grand. How about this? That's it. I thought it might be. May I have it back? Yeah, sure. It's platinum, isn't it? White gold. Well, you better have it back then. Thanks. It's pretty valuable. I've made that. And, of course, I'm grateful. Funny you don't look it. Sorry, could I offer you a drink? Well, uh, I wasn't expecting a cash reward. Scotch. I'm sorry if I don't seem grateful enough, Mr. Grant, but I hadn't had time to realize I'd lost it. You hadn't. I nicked it. I beg your pardon? You had. I lifted it out of your handbag. I was led to believe you'd given up that sort of thing years ago, Mr. Grant. Just give him the hand, then. Did you take it so you could bring it back and have me gush all over you? Not quite. Then how about... My dear, I lost my cigarette case. And you know that delicious, sinister cat, Tony Grand, the crook? Gambler? Well, you obviously know the tune. Is that what you wanted? No, not really. I was going to try for you tomorrow. Try for me? Yeah, send you a bunch of flowers and try getting you out for a meal and all that. But as I was going, I saw you put down your bag. It was open, and there was that case. Well, I thought. If I can get that to stick to my hand, I can use it as a lever to come round and put in me bid. I know the honest, dishonest approach, Mr. Grand. I was married. I? No, thanks. You just hold it for a while. That'll do the trick. Anyway, you've got it wrong. Have I? Yeah. I think not. Well, I'm telling you, so be told. I started off nicking it as an excuse. But I got such a kick out of it. I wanted to come and tell you. You mean stealing gave you pleasure? That's the area. I'd forgotten what it was like. Thanks. Any time at all. Why give it back to me, though? Wasn't worth the risk. It's worth 500 pounds. I'm carrying more than that, without the price of the ring. You mean someone might have seen you take it? Don't get cheeky. I'm a professional. Sorry. I didn't mean to impugn your status. You were. What was it that worried you? Well, they wouldn't have been able to pass it to me, but they'd have known all right. Who? The authorities. Yes, I suppose they would. Suppose. It stands to reason. But you didn't have to tell me you'd actually stolen it, did you? You could have let me think you'd found it. I'd dropped it, something like that. Would you have believed me? No, but does that matter? Well, of course it does. I only believe in telling good, honest, high watermark lies. Mind you, I almost didn't bring it back. And what would you have done with it? Chucked it in the river was the first thought. Oh, no. Oh, yes. When I was a kid, about 16, I came across this beautiful brooch. Came across? Yeah, thieved it. When I started showing it around, I knew I was in trouble. It was big. Too big. So I chucked it in the river. What a terrible thing to do. Stealing it, you mean? No, throwing it away. Why? It wasn't worth a knuckle to me. It was trouble. Only one thing to do with trouble. Chuck it in the river and hope it won't float. But you said it was beautiful. The most beautiful thing I ever earned in my life. You didn't earn it, you stole it. Well, I was a thief. It was my job. What I stole was my wages. I stole that brooch. I earned it. But I'm afraid I don't see it that way. No, of course you don't. I mean, you're not a thief. It's not your job. There's a little more to it than that. Oh, I? Of course there is, and you know it. No, I don't. You earn your stipend by straight work. The only catch is you have to pay income tax. 
And those days I earned my living by Bentwick. I didn't pay any income tax. For every so often I went to jail. You can't compare income tax with going to jail. I just did. Well, it's hardly normal morality. But I wasn't normal. I was a thief. Even so, you can't expect me to condone throwing away a valuable piece of jewellery. It is the throwing away that bothers you more than the stealing, isn't it? No, of course not. Oh, come on, pray truth. There's no witnesses. It's wrong to steal. It must be. They lock you up if they catch you at it. And as for throwing away... It beautiful... is the throwing away that gets on the back of your teeth, isn't it? I hate to think of a beautiful thing being lost forever. Why, it wasn't yours. Just because you wanted to protect yourself. And don't tell me you can't see that. I can't. I was going to sell it. And if I got 20% of what it was worth, I'd have been a very lucky lad. What had I been? A very lucky lad. Anyway, as soon as I got my thieving pinks on it, it was finished as a unit. The fellow I'd sold it to would have to break it up to distribute it. But I couldn't sell it. I was a straightforward thief who'd made an honest mistake. I couldn't take it back and say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't handle this, or anything smaller. So I chucked it in the river. A proper thief doesn't hold on to things for himself. That's all right for amateurs, softheads, klepto thingies. And don't tell me you can't see that. And you've no regrets. No, of course you haven't. Of course I have. Everybody regrets wasting time. But you didn't throw my case in the river. No. And you've told me you stole it from me. Yeah. Why? Well, I've been watching you all night. But I knew I was swimming upstream. Go on. I was getting nowhere near you. That reception's your sort of playground, not mine. I was losing. I'm glad you could see that. You were contrary. You make a point of letting no one impress you, particularly fellas. You stand around like a great big lollipop, and all the men in the room are waiting on you to see if you're going to let them have a lick. I could do something good to grab you with, so I nicked your cigarette case. I thought I might be able to crack your ice if I pulled a special. I think it's only fair to tell you I don't like thieves. Oh, I... Particularly as it's people like me they usually steal from. Yeah, I had noticed. But come on, I haven't thieved from you. I don't know why you think I'd be interested in someone like you anyway. Me hey, too. Get it right. I'm the one who's interested. You haven't had time to get interested in me yet. That'll come later. Oh, it will. I don't share your confidence. You will. What makes you so sure? I've made me mind up. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And it has gone on quite long enough. Will you finish your drink and go? Okay. Tell me why you're not interested in me. I have no intention of telling you. We've nothing in common. I'm honest, you're a thief. Not any longer. Anyway, you are not that honest. I certainly am. You've had sticky fingers tonight. What? Don't be ridiculous. I saw you. Not long after you arrived, you pinched something. How dare you? You were standing by that food table. And you took out your cigarette case. Empty. Oh, I noticed particular, because I thought, Get in, kid. Offer her a cig. But before I had the chance, you'd filled it from one of those wine glasses full of fags. That's not stealing. It is when it takes you three journeys to fill the case, and you look around to see if anybody's noticed you after. Everybody does that. I didn't. I couldn't afford to. But then I was a working thief when you were going to that posh school in a brown gym slip and a little straw boot. Oh, no, that won't do. You're changing your life. Stick to the point. Nobody would think I was dishonest for helping myself to a few cigarettes. I do. Yes, but who are you? A self-confessed thief. It takes one to know one. Hundreds of people do what I did. There's an awful lot of thieves about. Helping myself to a few free fags is not stealing. If you'd seen me doing it, what would you have thought? Oh, that's different. Oh, I see. So there's one law for you and another for me. That's the name of the game. But you're a convicted thief. I'm not. Only because you've been luckier than me, up to now. Those cigarettes were free. Sure, to smoke. Not to take away in dirty great handfuls. Oh, this is stupid. But what's it got to do with you, anyway? I've paid my income tax. I am a citizen again. There is far too much of this petty pilfering going on nowadays. You know, I bet a magistrate said that only last week. Oh, very funny, especially after you stole my cigarette case. 
two wrongs don't make you right. What are you trying to prove? That we have got something in common. If it's only that we're a couple of thieves. You can hardly equate a fistful of cigarettes with a valuable piece of jewellery. I was always brought up to believe it was the thought that counts, but it seems you're more interested in the price. Right. How much are these cigarettes worth? Three bob? Something like that. I don't know. I was first nicked for coming across five sixpenny bars of chocolate. I got a year in an approved school for that. That seems steep. They worked on the idea I'd been at it before. They were right, of course. You see, I was like you. It was the first time I'd been caught red-handed. They reckoned if I'd had a lawyer, I'd have got off with a conditional discharge. What do you think you'll get? I don't make a habit of dishonesty. Now, look. How many ashtrays in the best nightclubs have you got at home? Do you ever buy soap or just rely on what you come across in the ladies? This is absurd. Have you ever, have you ever taken a coat hanger or a towel from a hotel? And it doesn't matter whether you were nicked or not, because once you've acted in that area, you're a thief, madam. Welcome to the club. Do you think it's a police? You're an arrogant bastard, aren't you? Thieving makes you hungry, doesn't it? Thirty. Married? Never bothered. Not a bad judge. Why are you staring at me? How about I get my lifts out of watching posh ladies eat? Why? It's a pretty tricky operation. They tend to have an hard time with it. Not you, though. You're managing very well. I was always neat. Dainty. Careful. Proper. You win. Hey, did you charge all this on my room? That's quite a thought. I didn't. You're capable of it, I'm sure. Oh, I'm capable, all right. You're sending me up, aren't you? To the ceiling and back. Why? I think you're funny. Oh. I suppose now we've eaten and had a few drinks, you're going to pounce. Am I? Won't do you any good. No? No. Then I'd better do it, then. Gave in pretty easily. Oh. You wanted me to pounce then, did you? No, of course not. I was just warning you. Thanks. Well, what do you propose to do? I was just wondering what your legs were like. I tried looking at them at the party, but it was too crowded. They're pretty good. Wouldn't expect you to say anything else. You'll have to take my word for it. Pity. It's a hard life. Gives a look. What? Gives a look. I won't move, but I ain't being curious. Well, I'm afraid you'll just have to be. Wouldn't cost you anything. That's not the point. You've always been selfish. About my legs, oddly enough, yes. Will an arm do? Beggars can't be choosers. All right. You were going at a bit, aren't you? <laughs> It's like being a crook. Different. Then what? Then not being one. Have you always been selfish? About being a crook, oddly enough, yes. Not bad. The other one matches it. Your turn. Hmm? 
Oh, yeah. My turn. All right. <clears throat> well, most of the time you can feel yourself all about here. Self-conscious, you mean? Sure. I mean, you're moving about and acting like you're the same as everybody else, but you know you're not. Half the time, you're laughing at everybody. But the other half, you're afraid. Being afraid is pretty exciting when you're a kid. But it's something you can do without as you go on. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, I think so. Well, if you do, it was a fair exchange. That's not it, no. That's all you're getting to really negotiate. Nothing's for nothing. Oh, I see. What you suggest? The house cult? That's a lot. I prize my secrets. Bare shoulders. You drive an hard bargain. The worst thing it does for you, <clears throat> uh, Stephen, I mean, is you start to think you're more clever than anybody else. So you take more chances. You want to see how far you can go until you get a capture. Then you want to see how far you can go until you are captured. It's soft. But it gives you the trembles. Some thieves reckon it's better than a woman. I don't. I'm glad. Well, thieves are mainly wrong because they're too much on their own, Mike. It's private. Thieves don't like sharing. They want it all for themselves. Well, I've known people like that who weren't thieves. Well, he was wrong as well, whoever he was. Do you want to play for more? No, I don't think so. It's getting dangerous. Scaredy cats. Did you find it hard to give up thieving? That's a foul. I know. Did you? Yeah, very. Why do it then? Well, if they caught me at it again, and they would have, the rascals, they'd have chucked away the key. So what did you do? <clears throat> A friend of mine opened up these gambling clubs. I went in with him. Stood around looking evil. Gave the place atmosphere. I frightened them into behaving themselves. But what did you do? Breathed heavy. Still sending me up again. You take that housecoat off and I won't. You're violent, then, are you? Not particular. Oh, I'm not above uh, clouting the idea all if anybody stands on me. But I don't hate easy. Hey, Angle Bells. I'm beginning to interest you, aren't I? Yes, I think you could say that. Well, it was only a matter of time. That kind of remark isn't calculated to endear you to me, you know. Yeah, it's great. Oh, I love that proud stuff. Why do I interest you? Or is that too naive a question? You've lost me there. Why do I interest you? You make me tremble. Oh? All over. Just like thieving, when I was a kid. You've lost control. Oh, no. Even when I trembled then, I still went through with it. It was when the trembling stopped and you had finished. As a thief, I mean. It just became automatic. Just going on until I got captured. Sad, really, and... And what? Numb. Dead, or oh, I don't know. You tell me. Anyway, it's over now. Glad? Of course. I sleep better. And most of the time, I'm pretty sure there's not a warrant out for me. And that's the way you want it. Well, that knock on the door back there made you drop your spoon. Who wants to live like that? But you took my cigarette case. Oh. I've told you, you worked on me. I had to do something. But it put you in jeopardy. Trouble, you mean? Well, you're worth it. Well, you could have tried a more straightforward approach. It wouldn't have worked. Not on you. You are a big tittle. You're that big, you're eight special handling. What makes you so sure? Had a look at yourself when you get out of the bath lately? I meant the special handling. Well, I'd watched you all night. Cooling off the fluff. Defending yourself at that party. Defending? There ain't no one crowd you. Keeping your guard up. I watched you. It gave me a twist. 
Well, there are reasons. I don't want to hear them. But surely. Ever. Well, you've told me a lot about yourself. You're still paying for that information. Anyway, what happened before doesn't interest me. Now, that's my lift. The rest's over. You seem very sure about what you want and what you don't want. I've got to be. Otherwise, I'll wind up being just a friend. And that wouldn't do? Not at all. I'm not sure that what you want is possible. It's possible, right enough. All right. Probable. You were the chief? Look. You're an attractive man. And I did notice you at the party. You're the sort of man every woman cheats to look at, aren't you? Yes, of course you are. Anyway, you were the only one there who wasn't trying to sell anything. Then there's that straight look in the eye and the firm hand clasp. Pretty commanding in anyone. But when that somebody is a um, gambler. Thief. Of course. But I don't see anything for us. I'm going back to London tomorrow. And I shan't be giving you my phone number. You've got a way of making everything seem very familiar and easy that worries me. Nothing's that easy. I'm in a strange town and it's all very unfamiliar. If you can change all that, in my experience of men, you can't be up to any good. Steady. You've already proved only too successfully that I'm as dishonest as you are. Now you've got me standing about showing off more flesh than is discreet under any circumstances. Any. You confuse me. And all this so easily that I'm either a fool or overly susceptible. Well, either way, it bothers me. You make me sound a right rascal. You are. And before it's too late, you're going. <clears throat> all right. Is that all? I'd have expected more. Win a little, lose a little. It's all in a day's fun. It was a brave try. Lunch. I'll meet you here tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Good night. I'll show you my river, both sides. Good night. 12 o'clock at the reception desk. I shan't be there. You will. Lunch with a thief. <laughs> <laughs> 